And that's how vaccines are made. I've got insulin at work. Come home quick. We ran out of insulin too. Some of our patients who had been treated and were well died from lack of insulin. That was a hectic time, particularly for me. And uh, of course, we did rediscover how to do it, and uh, the secret can never be, be lost. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Type Me Diabetes Health and Lifestyle Channel. Quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video, nor am I a professional in the field of immunology. I can barely say the word. But all links to the information today's video will be posted in the description below in case you have any questions. And we're on the verge of the fastest vaccine distribution the world has ever seen. And whether you're planning on getting or passing on this wave of vaccines is really your own personal decision. For others, depending on where you live on this planet and what your occupation may be, the decision may have already been made for you. But today I hope to be able to answer a few questions and hopefully help you make a informed decision if you have one once that time comes. We're gonna start with a brief explanation of what vaccines are and how they work. And next I'll give you some quick descriptions of the three main types of COVID vaccines about to hit the market, pros and cons on each type. And we'll finish with honest thoughts, suggestions and questions from us, the Sultans of Sugar. So without further ado, let's talk about these vaccines in the prick. So what is a vaccine? Well, in order to explain what a vaccine, I think it's best that we first answer why a vaccine exists. So the immune system is a vast and extremely complicated series of systems throughout your body, but I'll simplify it in this way. The average human has what's called an active immunity. Now, this is a cascade system of sorts that activates when you're exposed to various disease organisms, AKA pathogens during your lifespan. Now, after an initial exposure to an antigen, your immune system then creates warriors called antibodies to fight these antigens. It also creates a Pokedex of sorts, if you're a nerd like me or my kids, to better recognize these invaders in case you need future protection from them. Now, an active immunity can occur naturally or it can be induced like when you're given a vaccine. And vaccines are substances that are produced with a sole intention of protecting you of contracting a specific or group of dangerous diseases. Or disease, disease, diseases, disease eye, whatever. Smart people you know. So in fact, the first vaccine dates back to 1796. And at the time, smallpox was ravaging the globe with an estimated three out of 10 people dying. And it was at this moment when our hero entered the scene, extremely curious yet slightly reckless, his name was Dr. Edward Jenner, the father of immunology. So through the powers of science and mostly observation, he noticed a local girl named Sarah who had contracted cowpox, which is a similar yet harmless disease, kind of like smallpox. Now, after her exposure, Sarah somehow developed an immunity to smallpox. And that's when a light bulb went off in Jenner's head. And he had an idea. He had a wonderful, awful idea. So perhaps if by infecting a patient with a similar yet weaker version of the disease, uh, they will gain immunity and avoid full-blown infection and death. So Jenner did what any curious, slightly reckless doctor would do. He used his gardener's eight-year-old son as a test subject. Jenner made a few surgical scratches on the boy's arm, and then he scraped some pus from Sarah's cowpox sore, and then he rubbed it into James's open wound. Uh, what could go wrong? Well, in this case, nothing. In fact, wouldn't you know it, young James never got smallpox, and this was the first vaccine ever invented. Well, recorded. According to WebMD, the simple definition is this. A vaccine is a substance that helps protect against certain disease. Vaccines contain a dead or weakened version of a virus, and it helps your immune system recognize and destroy that target virus from future infection. November 2nd, 2020, the CDC released an article outlining the three main types of COVID-19 vaccines currently in phase three trials and that are closest to market. What we need to understand is not so much the brands of these vaccines, but rather the types of vaccines. These three types of vaccines are known as vector, protein, and mRNA. Now, as far as efficacy and safety go, the type of vaccine is going to matter the most. And well, 
efficacy and safety, we'll talk about those terms later. But first, let's start with the vector vaccine. So vector vaccines are whole pathogen vaccines. Uh, these are similar to the sterile, safer versions of the smallpox vaccine we spoke about earlier. A vector vaccine contains inactive or weakened versions of a live virus, and inactive vaccines are produced by killing a pathogen with chemicals, heat, or radiation. Now, this is usually the preferred type of vaccine because it can elicit a strong protective immune response that might result in a lifelong immunity to that disease. And well, who doesn't want lifelong immunity? Unless the vaccine might cause adverse reactions to them who wants adverse reactions, which these tend to do. So once inside the cell, the immune system recognizes the vector as foreign and prompts T and B lymphocyte warriors to attack and remember how to fight this vaccine in the future. So there are some pros and some cons to vectors. Pros that they are the oldest, most tested vaccines and they can offer lifelong immunity and they're easy to store. Well, cons, they hold the highest cases of adverse reactions and they're slow to manufacture. Now protein subunit vaccines. As a result to the vector vaccine's adverse reactions, people began to avoid vaccines, wouldn't you know? So around the 1970s, there was a increase in new infections, wouldn't you know? So this decrease in vaccinations motivated scientists to look at the vaccination process differently so subunits were invented. And as their name implies, subunits differ from vector vaccines as they do not contain the entire weakened or inactive virus. Subunits include components of the antigens that simulate the immune system. This then activates the immune cascade system as explained previously. And now most seasonal flu vaccines are developed using this method. So here are the subunits pros and cons. They're pretty much even Steven. They're moderately tested, uh, they have a moderate length of immunity, uh, they have moderate reactions, they're pretty easy to store, and the manufacturing time isn't too bad. So lastly, let's talk about the one that everyone's talking about, the mRNA vaccines. So this one's interesting for a few reasons. Now first off, it's pretty new. Like the earliest experiments of RNA vaccines go back to rats uh, in like 1992. And the only human experiments that I was able to locate were these rabies tests that they did in 2017. So yeah, it's like three years old. Now, mRNA vaccines are different in that they don't use inactive, weakened, or subunits of the virus to create immunity. mRNA instead takes advantage of the process completely. Once injected, it only gives your body the information it needs to stimulate an immune response to a target disease without exposing you to any piece of the virus itself. So the body is then tricked into making antibodies to protect you and the cascade process begins. So here are the pros and cons of mRNA vaccines. Pros, in theory, they might be the safest with the mildest reactions. They're very easy to manufacture on a large scale, which is important right now in the middle of a pandemic. Cons, they're new. They're uh, really, really, really new, and we don't know enough about them. They're also very extremely difficult to store, and you might need an annual booster if you'd like lifelong immunity. All right, so now time for honest thoughts, questions, suggestions, and the squeeze. All right, so thoughts. There's a term that's been thrown around a lot lately, and I, I think it best describes the issue at hand. And the word is efficacy. Now, efficacy is the ability to produce a desired or intended result. But I think producing the desired result is only really half the battle when alleviating a person's concerns. On the other hand, I think the most important part, the part that's missing, is safety. Now, what good is a COVID vaccine that is efficacious and that it keeps you from getting COVID, but yet it gives you some other type of autoimmune disease? Some of you might agree, one autoimmune disease is, is enough. I definitely don't need another. And I will say honestly, I don't know how I feel about the mRNA vaccine that we still know so little about. But on the other hand, a flu vaccine, if you've ever had one, uh, goes on from a suggestion to manufacturing to distribution to injection in under a year as well. Did you ever question the class of flu vaccine that you're being administered or even the efficacy rating? Me neither. So questions, yes, I have them, uh, lots of them, and I'm sure you do too, but here's a few. Now, if mass vaccines are distributed and administered all at once, what are the staffing implications for businesses or government if many people are all experiencing side effects at the same time? 
Now, if the side effects of a COVID vaccine are similar to the actual virus itself, how will you know if you should be quarantined or not? Or perhaps maybe you were infected days before the vaccine or shortly after, before your body was able to build the immunity you need. And many of these vaccines will be two-part, and that you'll take the first one, and then weeks later you'll take the second one in order to give you the proper amount of immunity. And what happens if somebody takes the first one, but refuses to take the second because they feel bad? It's a crazy world we are living in, but my suggestion is this. Do your research, talk to your doctor, get informed, and make a decision that will benefit both you, your loved ones, and everyone on the planet that we share. So please stay safe out there. I'm Ben, I'm Type Me, and I'll see you next time. Good evening.